If you cook a lot, you probably also spend a lot of time cleaning up afterwards, both to make things not gross and to make them safe to cook with or eat off next time. But then there's cast iron and carbon steel, pans which, in order for them to work properly, you actually want to be careful not to clean too well. Isn't that gross? Or worse, actually dangerous? And what does that mean for how you should actually clean these things? This is Minute Food. This is a question, well, a comment, really, that we get all the time. And while I am a huge fan of both cast iron and carbon steel, I can see where these misgivings about seasoned pans are coming from. I mean, that word alone, seasoned, is one of the big issues here. It kind of implies that it's supposed to help give flavor to what you cook in these pans. And yeah, the idea of potentially decades old fat flavoring your food is downright disgusting. But that's not what should be going on here. Cooking in a seasoned pan does not mean cooking in a dirty, greasy pan. See, in a properly seasoned pan, the fat is no longer fat. Thanks to super high heat, it has undergone a chain reaction that bonds the fat molecules together and to the pan. You can find more details about what actually happens in this previous video we made about seasoning. But what's important here is that this process transforms the fat molecules into something totally different, a solid material called a polymer that's bonded to the pan itself and acts as a protective, nearly nonstick coating. Back in the day, people built up this coating by simply cooking in the pan again and again and again over a long period of time. This, the long time scale over which these layers were laid down, is what gives seasoning its name. As Adam Ragusea talks about in this great video, a pan is called seasoned for the same reason you might call a person seasoned or some firewood seasoned, because it's been around for, well, seasons, not because it's supposed to flavor your food. I will argue that cooking with a well-seasoned pan can contribute to tastier food because the types of pans you generally season excel in things like getting a great sear, so they can help you create all sorts of delicious flavor compounds via the Maillard reaction. But if you're tasting fish from last night's dinner or crunching on crumbs from the last meal you cooked in your seasoned pan, you aren't cleaning it well enough. So let's chat about how you should clean a seasoned pan. You do want to remove all the actual cooking residue, any crumbs, cooked on gunk, pools of fat or oil. Some people swear by coarse salt, chainmail thingamajigs, and nylon or bamboo brushes. But in our house, we are big fans of these little plastic scrapers and these awesome yucca scrubbies that a friend of mine makes. I'll put the link to those in the description. If you need to, you can scrape a bit more aggressively with something a bit more serious or briefly boil a little water to loosen up the gunk. What you don't want to do when you clean a cast iron or carbon steel pan is remove the seasoning layers you've worked so hard to build up by, say, scrubbing too aggressively, boiling too long, or <gasps> putting it in the dishwasher. This subtlety, that you want to clean the pan but not clean off the polymerized seasoning, is where a lot of the misconceptions about not actually cleaning these pans come from. As long as your pan is properly seasoned, a basic cleaning is not going to hurt the layers upon layers of tough polymer. And that includes soap, despite what some people say. Back in your grandma's time, soap used to contain lye, a super high pH compound, which is capable of taking the seasoning off a pan. But modern dish soaps don't generally contain lye. So although you shouldn't usually need soap, a little isn't gonna hurt. Once your pan is gunk-free, the best practice is to reapply a teeny touch of oil and briefly heat it back up. This removes any leftover moisture, therefore preventing rust, and adds an extra seasoning layer to keep your pan in tip-top condition. I will admit, and all you seasoning pedants may want to cover your ears for a few seconds here, in our house, we will often skip this entirely, or at least skip the additional heating step. But we live in a super dry place, so we don't have to worry about evaporating away excess moisture. And our everyday pans are in such heavy rotation that they're basically constantly being seasoned. The bottom line is that after cleaning a cast iron or carbon steel pan, there shouldn't be any old food or greasy residue left, just the pan's polymerized seasoning itself, and maybe a very thin layer of oil. But say, for whatever reason, your cleaning falls short and you leave <gasps> a bit of crusty food behind. Or worst case scenario, you ignore our advice about cleaning entirely and don't even give your pan a scrape before calling it a day. Forget the issue of flavor. Won't dangerous stuff grow in there? The science on this is very clear. Nope. First of all, microbes require moisture to thrive. 
Any crustified food left in your pan will have been so incinerated that any water that was once inside it will be long gone, leaving it uninhabitable for any nasty stuff. What's more, as soon as you preheat that pan for the next use, the high temps will kill any nasties that maybe somehow could have grown. In this way, a pan is really different from using a cutting board you never sanitized or a never fully washed plate. Those things aren't subjected to high heat in the same way a pan is. So to the copious commenters out there, a seasoned pan shouldn't be a dirty pan. But even if it is, it isn't a dangerous pan. So let's stop panning these pans. We were so excited to welcome a bunch of new pan fans to our Patreon community after our last video. If you're one of them, thank you for joining us. We are so excited to share all sorts of fun, behind the scenes, minute food stuff with you. If you haven't become a member yet, come check it out. You will get gorgeous printables, discount merch codes, early access to our videos, and best of all, you'll be supporting Minute Food and helping us make the delicious, nerdy content you love. Get started at patreon.com slash minutefood. Thank you.